Welcome, folks. This is No Bones About Wrestling, and this is the first of our special WrestleMania content. And this show, this is the bottom five gimmicks ever featured at WrestleMania. The worst five gimmicks ever at WrestleMania. So, let's get right to it. Uh... Alright, so first, we have a tie for fifth place. I just could not make up my mind about who was worst. Uh, the first act tied for fifth place is Skinner. Skinner was an alligator hunter addicted to chewing tobacco who would spit it on his opponent's and usually would spit it all over himself in the process. He carried an alligator claw to the ring with him in order to uh, intimidate his opponents. Uh, bizarrely enough, he was booked as the penultimate match on WrestleMania Eight. Skinner lost to Owen Hart in 96 seconds. Uh, Skinner wore a lot of tan clothing and, and like a plaid shirt was a, a bayou-looking uh, redneck guy, kind of bald on top, long hair in the back, uh, you know, hunting hunting boots, that type of outfit. Uh, an act that did not last long, as you would imagine. Not a lot of kids lining up to buy a Skinner toy. I don't think he made it into any video games, if I'm if memory serves me correctly. But there was a Skinner toy, I'm sure of that. I don't think anyone bought one, but there was a Skinner toy. Uh, Alright, the other act tied for fifth in the worst gimmick ever featured at WrestleMania. Demolition. Now this may come as a surprise to some. Demolition, they were a very successful tag team. Now hear me out. They were multi-time world tag team champions. I'm not saying they didn't have success. I'm just saying their gimmick sucked. Uh, because if you look at them, you know, they're wearing what they wear to the ring wearing all this black leather and these metal studs uh and these straps with a with a metal ring in the center of their chest and these uh, masks these masks don't help the look at all these masks that just have you know the eye holes and the mouth hole in them they they look like they look like what you see if you, you know, click too, you know, if you click the wrong button too many times on the internet. Um, basically, they're they're wearing S and M gear, and th this is out here on the wrestling show that you know children are watching. Uh, but the guys are no doubt wearing S and M gear. If you don't believe me, go ahead take. Take 20 seconds, just Google Demolition, WWF, uh, Ring Entrance Gear. Go for it. Look it up for yourself. And then if you want to get a different search on your computer altogether, if you're brave, look up S&M Gear. You'll find that it's a, a, almost an exact match. You'll get page one of S&M gear will be demolition uh, entrance gear. Yeah, and now you're, now, now you're wondering, how do I know so much about S&M gear? Well, I'm 39 years old, and you, 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 know, you don't live to be 39 years old without hearing about a thing or two. So we'll just leave that at that. And so Demolition, they did see some uh, success at WrestleMania. 
so Demolition were a team. They were called Axe and Smash. Later, they added a third member to the team named Crush. Uh, at WrestleMania Four, they beat the team Strike Force to win the World Tag Team titles. At WrestleMania Five, they beat the Powers of Pain to retain the World Tag Team titles. At WrestleMania Six, they beat the Colossal Connection to win the World Tag Team titles. They beat Andre the Giant in his final WrestleMania match, WrestleMania Six, to win the tag team titles. And at WrestleMania Seven, uh, Demolition lost to. Ginikiro Tenryu and Koji Kitao. And I may be butchering those names. My apologies to those gentlemen. Uh, so yeah, Demolition, by far the most successful members of this Worst 5 WrestleMania gimmick list. Because uh, it goes all downhill from here, I promise you. All right, the fourth worst gimmick ever featured at WrestleMania is the Gobbledy Gooker. So if you're not familiar with the Gobbledy Gooker, uh, what this was, I'll tell you, this is how it originates. We'll, we'll go back many years. We'll go back to 1990. It was the fall of 1990. And this was the brainchild of Vince McMahon. Uh, and the WWF, they start taking this egg, this giant egg around to all their shows with them. And it has its own pedestal. And the pedestal has a giant, uh, a giant bed of straw. And under the giant bed of straw is a, is a big question mark for, you know, standing for who knows what the fuck is in this egg. And they take it to every show. Every show for, I forget how long exactly, but for, for a month or, or so. It's at every show. And we see it. And what's in the egg is a new wrestler. You know, is a new belt? You know, what in what on earth could it be in this thing? I mean, it has to be a big deal. We're seeing it at every show. I mean, the WWF, you know, usually delivers on, on things. So we get to Survivor Series 1990. And it's time to deliver... And one surprise is delivered on on Survivor Series 1990. Uh, that surprise, Ted DiBiase's surprise uh, team member is The Undertaker. It's The Undertaker's first match with WWF. So that's a pretty big fucking surprise. So they've got a lot to live up to there. Uh, it doesn't live up to it, though. Spoiler alert. Does not live up to it. So they've got the, this big egg, cracks open, and out pops the gobbledygooker. And what this is, it's someone in a turkey costume. That's all. Just someone in a turkey costume, a multicolored turkey costume. It's red, it's black, it's blue, there's some orange on it. It's got, uh, you know, feathers. It's got the little, the little turkey uh, thing. I don't know what to call it on on its neck. I'm not sure what that's called. A got no. I have no idea what the fuck that's called. Um. And Mean Gene Okerlund is in the ring with this thing, and the gobbledygooker. Dances around with Mean Gene Okerlund. And they're playing music for it. And this thing dances around. And the crowd, they're at the Boston Garden. And the crowd is not happy. Because they knew, you know, they know that 
part of what they were there to experience was what's in the egg, what's in the big egg. And part of their their experience that night was what's in this big egg. And it turns out to be just a fucking person in a turkey costume dancing around like a, you would see at a child's birthday party and nothing more to it. And so it vanishes for many years until WrestleMania X7. That's what they called WrestleMania 17 because they didn't think people could handle Roman numerals past a certain point. So they called WrestleMania 17 X7. They had what they called a gimmick battle royal. And those of us who experienced it had uh, flashbacks because out for the gimmick battle royal came this fucking thing came this gobbledygooker, and I was afraid it was going to win, and the crowd, the crowd was on the gooker's side, but it, it did not win, and uh, I tell you, Typhoon, I remember it clear as day, uh, Typhoon, I believe is who it was, eliminated the gobbledygooker, and he was I obviously had been instructed, don't fuck up the gooker costume. Because he took this turkey person in the turkey costume and he set them down like as gently as possible on the outside without damaging a fake feather on this fucking costume. And the gobbledygooker was eliminated. It had become a, a favorite, I guess, over the years, but that's because they weren't there when it happened. They don't know what it was like. Uh, Who did win the gimmick battle royal, you might be asking? Uh, Why aren't they on this list? Uh, Well, that's because it was the Iron Sheik, former world champion. The Iron Sheik was in the gimmick battle royal. He did not deserve to be in this gimmick battle royal with people like the goon and the fucking gobbledygooker. And uh, whoever else, Abe Knuckleball Schwartz and whoever the the fuck else was in this silly battle royal and Brother Love uh, and other people that didn't didn't make the list. Uh, And that's the last time I'm going to say gobbledygooker, I promise you. So that's that's fourth place. Uh, Third place for the... Worst gimmick ever featured at WrestleMania is Albert. And so you may never, if you're a modern fan, you may never have heard of this guy. Uh, At first, when he debuted, his name was Prince Albert. And if you're not familiar with that, that's the uh, that's what you call it when a man has his dick pierced through the head. It's called a Prince Albert. And this guy on his wrestling gear had that kind of pictured on on the gear. Had a, a, a horseshoe, had a giant horseshoe shape on the crotch of his wrestling gear because obviously that's what you want to picture when you're watching wrestling is this giant, hairy, 325-pound man's cock with the fucking horseshoe jewelry through it. What the fuck were they thinking? Why why did this get approved? Why did they think this would make a, a penny... It's beyond me. I don't know. Someone's fetish made it a little too far up in the approval process. That's my guess. Uh, I don't know. That's just my guess. So like I said, when he approved, his name was Prince Albert. They shortened it to Albert because they thought it was a little too much on the head. (laughs) Oh, if you get my joke. They thought it hit the nail too much on the head, uh, so they shortened his name to Albert. 
I believe he is still employed uh, by WWE today. His name, I think, is Matt Bloom. I could be correct. Uh, I could be incorrect about that. I think that's his name, Matt Bloom, and I think he still is employed by them as a as a trainer, talent scout, something like that. And supposedly is very good at that. And I'm I'm glad for him. I'm glad he still has a job. I'm I'm glad he's good at that. But this gimmick fucking sucked, and was stupid, and uh, wasn't really uh, just. Uh, I mean, if you got your dick pierced, if that's your thing, hey, great, good, great, good for you. If it makes you happy, great. If it makes your friends and your your wife or whoever your your boyfriend happy, great, good, good for you, good for them. Is it a good idea for a wrestling angle or a, a gimmick? A good idea for a wrestling gimmick? Hey, what what's your gimmick? Oh, I'm a voodoo priest. What's your gimmick? Oh, I'm a, I'm a macho man. What's your gimmick? Oh, oh, me? I got my cock pierced. Yeah, man. Yeah, my dick's pierced. That's my gimmick. I don't know. Doesn't, doesn't seem to do it for me. But that was his gimmick. His gimmick was that he had his dick pierced. And at, uh, at WrestleMania 2000, uh, Albert teamed with Test, and they were accompanied by Trish Stratus. Okay, so to go one further, his name's Albert. They were a team called T and A, <laughs> uh, Test and Albert. And uh, they were accompanied by Trish Stratus, and they beat the team of Head Cheese that was uh, assembled of Al Snow and Steve Blackman, and they were accompanied by Chester McCheeserton, who, if memory serves it right, was a midget that Al Snow uh, used to dress in funny outfits. All right. You still with me? Good. All right, the number two... Worst gimmick ever featured at WrestleMania is Bart Gunn. So this this one takes a little backstory. Uh, so Bart Gunn. Here's what they did. Uh, Back in 1990, um, back in 1999, they had, WWF had a tournament called the Brawl for All Tournament, 1998-99. They had a tournament called the Brawl for All Tournament. And it was a combination boxing and wrestling mostly boxing you the the competitors wore boxing gloves but you could you could do takedowns you could charge your opponent and take them down or you could kind of pick them up and and take them down um or you could just straight up box them and here's the thing here's what made it one of the worst ideas in the history of professional wrestling it was it was a shoot meaning it it was unscripted they they chose the uh, the brackets at random and i i think they started with 16 competitors and they chose the brackets at random and the, they they did not plan the winners it was every man for himself best man won it was it was a shoot unplanned Totally on the up and up. And Dan Severn was in this thing. And if you're not familiar with Dan Severn, he was a professional wrestler, but before that was an ultimate fighter. Um, and he wins his first round matchup, but he so, so thinks that this tournament might make him look bad, he pulls out after the first round. 
and they have to redraw the brackets. And and the whole thing is uh, they've put they've signed Doctor Death. Steve Williams has come to America. He had been in Japan for quite a while, and he's come to America. And WWF is gonna try and do some business with him. And Doctor Death Steve Williams is in the brawl for all. But. And and he's the 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 favorite, at least with the guys in the back with the front office. Everybody thinks Doctor Death, and I mean he was a um, amateur wrestler, I mean, a star amateur wrestler. I mean, legit tough guy. Everybody thinks Doctor Death is gonna walk away with this thing, but that's not the way it turns out. Oh, and by the way, I left off. If you want to realize, uh. You know, how did an idea this bad make it through? And who the fuck, you know, where did it come from? Two words, and and then you'll say, oh, I see. Two words is all it will take for you to, to see. Vince Russo. So now we're on the same page, right? Now you see how this dog shit of an idea made it from point A to television. Vince Russo. Uh, in fact, Vince Russo, the the, the uh, origin of the idea is that Vince Russo heard JBL, John Bradshaw Layfield, he heard JBL in the locker room one day bragging about how tough he thought he was. And so Vince Russo devised this whole fucking shoot tournament this boxing wrestling thing devised this whole fucking thing so he could see Bradshaw get knocked out on television <laughs> what a petty man what a small petty man Vince Russo must be so that that's what he does and so like I said Dan Seven pulls out they have to redraw the brackets people get hurt I mean this you know throws off storylines um, it's just a bad idea right from the start. Doesn't go right. It doesn't go right right from the start. And and furthermore, it's not entertaining. Maybe the worst part of it all. It's not entertaining to watch. But they've committed to it to doing this brawl for all tournament. And uh, Bart Gunn beats Doctor Death Steve Williams and D- Bart Gunn. Formerly part of the Smoking Guns, he was the uh, Billy Gunn, who is still today in AEW. Uh, you know, he's Billy Gunn. This Bart Gunn was his brother. Um, you know, not in reality, but in, in wrestling. Bart Gunn was his brother when they were the Smoking Guns. Bart Gunn goes on and wins the tournament. Wins Brawl for All and is the Brawl for All champion. And has has gone through the whole bracket and beat Doctor Death, and WWE thinks, hey, maybe we can we can use this. You know, we've got a a tough guy. He's not the best on the the mic. He doesn't really have a gimmick, but now this is a gimmick. He's a tough guy. And so what they do is for WrestleMania 15, uh, they go and they get a prize fighter. They get this guy named Butterbean who is not a skilled wrestler, or excuse me, who is not a skilled boxer at all, but what he is is he's a big guy. He's a big, fat guy, and he's tough. He will hit, he's a big, fat, solid guy with a lot of force behind his punches. So what he may, what he lacks in, in being toned and being an athlete is, he makes up for and just with the weight behind his punches. And he he always you could see him on ESPN or USA. They always used to have boxing on. Um and you always used to be able to see Butterbean on, you know, Friday nights or whatever it was, beating beating up some poor guy. And he had a had a great record for quite a while. And so they get Butterbean and they say, We're gonna have uh, brawl for all match, Bart Gunn versus Butterbean, the boxer. 
And we're going to get boxing champion Vinny Pazienza, the Pasmanian Devil. He's going to be the special guest referee. And we're going to put it on at WrestleMania 15. So we got this whole thing. Going to launch Burt Gunn's new... Uh, going to launch his uh, new phase of his career. And so Burt Gunn's gimmick now is he's a tough guy. He's a, he's a boxer. And they, they send Burt Gunn for boxing training. And so he takes the ring... 35 fucking seconds in, and Butterbean has knocked Bart Gunn out. And so his gimmick, his real-life gimmick of I'm a real-life boxer now is down the fucking toilets, and now the whole Brawl for All tournament, which took place over weeks on television to show how tough these guys are, now none of them look tough because Butterbean just knocked the winner of the whole fucking thing out in 35 seconds. And Bart Gunn's new gimmick of I'm a boxer now is instantly dead. And one of the biggest train wrecks in the history of professional wrestling. Um, so Such a big train wreck. There's a Dark Side of the Ring. Most of the episodes of Dark Side of the Ring, are. this is how bad it was. Most of the episodes of the show Dark Side of the Ring are about someone dying. But there's an episode about the brawl for all. That's how bad it went. That's how badly it went. Is it was to to the makers of the show, I guess. It's on the scale of someone dying. So that's the number two worst gimmick. Is Bart Gunn as a boxer. A lot of backstory there, but I just I had to I had to go from A to B so you could get why Bart Gunn as a boxer was such a bad idea, and why it wasn't uh, why why it didn't work, and why it was such a big deal that it didn't work. All right, that brings us to number one, and you gotta wonder after all these Jesus, Asa, what could possibly be left what could be worse than what i have heard well there is one he is the king of bad gimmicks to be featured at wrestlemania and it, it makes sense that he stands above all the rest because he is one of the tallest men ever to be featured in the world wrestling federation and that is giant Gonzalez. So Giant Gonzalez was uh, a man. I forget his. I forget his real name, but he was Jesus. I think he was like seven foot eight or something, and he he was signed with the Atlanta Hawks at one point of the National Basketball Association. Did not work out because this guy can can hardly move, unfortunately. He has a lot of physical problems. I'm not making fun of his physical problems. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not making fun of his physical problems. I'm making fun of the gimmick here. Uh, because what the gimmick is, is, so they, it, he's called Giant Gonzalez because he's, he's Hispanic, so they give him the, the name Gonzalez. He's called Giant because, like I said, he's fucking seven foot eight. And so they give him this suit, and he's supposed to look like a caveman, I guess, or a, a naked man. And all it is is it's a suit. It's like a bodysuit, but it's a bodysuit meant to look like he's naked, but it has patches of fur, like all around his, you know, his privates and his anus. Are patches of fur, so you don't see his privates and his anus. Uh, and he has fur, uh, fur, big patch of fur on his chest, you know, to show you how what a what a missing link this guy is. You know, he's somewhere between man and monster. He's this giant of a man. 
And this though the suit is the worst thing. You gotta you gotta look it up. I my my words alone I can try, but my words will not do it justice. Uh, you have to Google Giant Gonzalez WWF. Uh, just do an image search for that uh, if you've not seen it before, and you will see this suit and how they they saw this suit and ever imagined that this would make money i mean just looking at the suit the first thing you think is total abject failure and so for anyone to think otherwise is is shocking is beyond me uh but some some someone thought it would uh would work, and I get, it made it past Vince McMahon at some point. I guess I don't know. Uh, I don't know what they were doing at Titan Towers in 1993 because this made it onto television. Hell, this made it past television. This made it onto WrestleMania Nine, 1993, and not only this is Giant Gonzalez wasn't just on the show; he was the Undertaker's opponent. Not only was he the Undertaker's opponent, Giant Gonzalez left the Undertaker laying. He put the Undertaker down. Now, he didn't do it with wrestling prowess, you see, because he had none. He didn't do it with, with physical skills, you see, because he had none. What he did it with was chloroform, because he had that. He had chloroform. Uh, or at least his manager, Harvey Whippleman, did. Uh, Harvey Whippleman, one of my favorite managers of the 90s, uh, he took a rag, soaked it in chloroform, and uh, John Gonzalez got it, put it to the Undertaker's mouth. Undertaker goes out, and the Undertaker won the match. And this is so his streak, this is when the streak wasn't legendary yet. The the streak at this point was just two and zero, and this match put it put the Undertaker streak to three and zero. The Undertaker won by DQ. Um, now the Undertaker he he revived and he uh, he revived sooner than a uh, you know than a live person would. You see, because the Undertaker is dead, uh, he revived sooner than a live person would from the chloroform. And he and Giant Gonzalez started fighting, and they were uh, uh, fighting down the aisle and back to the dressing room, if memory serves correctly, as Paul Bearer followed behind them, you know, uh, shouting, yes, oh, yes, yes. Um, so the Undertaker kind of got, you know, Got one back on Giant Gonzalez. He wasn't left uh, laying. He, uh, he wasn't left to look like a punk, really. Um, and this this feud it, it went. Uh, this was April. I think it was April fourth, ninety three. I could be wrong there. I think that's I think that's correct. April fourth, nineteen ninety three. This feud went all the way to SummerSlam in August where they had to have a rest in peace match and the undertaker beat giant gonzalez i believe that was the last time giant gonzalez was seen in wwf um but yeah this was the worst gimmick ever featured at wrestlemania giant gonzalez in this fucking fur suit man suit thing um the suit did have a muscular butt like i said you see the butt you just don't see the anus or the privates, you see, because that would be <laughs> over the top, and we don't we don't do over the top at the WWF. It's class all the way. Uh, so, folks, I hope uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, these stories as much as I've enjoyed uh, recounting them to you. Uh, these are things that. Uh, to some order uh, or another, scarred me in my youth. So now I've had to share them with you. And uh, we'll be back with more 
WrestleMania content. We have a bit more to do this week. We're going to try and fit in a lot of WrestleMania content this week in the lead up to WrestleMania 39. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And as Mick Foley would say, have a nice day. And this is No Bones About Wrestling, signing off.